The people in forensic, as the labs where the scientists work are commonly called, are used to evidence arriving from quite unexpected quarters, but none more unexpected, I think, than the one at the core, and I use that word advisedly, of this week's story. This was a Northern Ireland sectarian murder investigated by the Royal Ulster Constabulary and the Northern Ireland Forensic Science Laboratory. But in order to protect them, actors have been used throughout. What they say, however, was actually said by those they portray. See you night then, boy. and eat your breakfast. Do you hear me? I'm sick of you and that old motor.
Night, lads. See you, Finnegan, Saturday night. Yes, we have. I don't want anyone in here without a good reason. It looked very much like a provo shooting, simply because the target was an off-duty member of the EDR. Right, Keith. Listen, I want you to get a couple of constables down there right away, right. see if they've seen anything at all, any sign of a car, anything like that. The first thing I noticed was that it was excellent grouping. It wasn't a spray job. Whoever had done it was obviously an expert shot, despite the fact that it was at such close distance. I've seen policemen on the range, and I know from my own experience, the safest place is behind the target. I could see where the grass had been flattened and where he'd moved from one point to another and fired. We had a fair idea from the calibre of the empty cartridge cases that the weapon was a Russian assault rifle. Um, there were about six different types of them. Uh, we thought it was probably a Kalashnikov or a Semenov, which were the two types of weapon used by the provisionals at that time. Uh, we were no doubt at all that it was a provisional killing. The scent of a human will remain for about 24 hours, so the dog had no trouble in picking up the trail. Really, we were looking for anything that may have been left behind, a cigarette butt, anything that was basically foreign to the scene. You could see from the number of rounds that had been fired that the gunman would have had to change magazine, so there was the possibility that he'd maybe perhaps dropped a magazine while running away. Track. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. What do you make of that? Where'd you find it? Up in the trees. Well, what way was he eating that? It wasn't the way I would have eaten an apple. It had been chawed. Uh, whoever had bitten it had held it with one jaw and sort of gnawed it with the other. But I didn't really attach any great significance to it. It might have evidential value, but it could have come from anywhere. It could have been thrown by the army, could have been thrown by a policeman even. Two cartridge cases from the Craig murder right. and an apple. I spoke to McIntyre at the laboratory. He was sceptical and uh, a bit sarcastic. He wanted to know what we were trying to do with it and what evidential value we could get from a, an apple. But as far as I was concerned, there was definitely evidence in the bite marks. What do you do with an apple? I had no experience at preserving plant tissue, and obviously I didn't want any shrinkage or distortion. 